Hello and welcome to the SciFest Movie Talk episode. So in this episode we continue our journey into the wizarding world of Harry Potter with the second movie adaptation derived from the works of J.K. Rowling. That is of course the movie based on the second book in the Harry Potter series. The 2002 fantasy adventure Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets as directed once again by Chris Columbus. Now, before I get started, I just wanted to issue a disclaimer, um, as per my disclaimer for the first movie, I can't comment on the movie with respect to the books. I am certainly muggle in that respect, and so I'll be coming at this purely from the point of view of the movie itself, and the overall Harry Potter movie franchise, rather than going into detail with regards to its closeness to the source material, of which I am not even remotely qualified to even attempt. I'll probably end up saying this in every review, but I'm sure that I am probably going to bring it up in this review uh, as we're going to retread old ground. This is such a phenomenal franchise uh, through and through and literally beloved across the world. There's probably very little I can actually say that most people haven't actually you know, heard before or have certainly thought themselves about the franchise. But ultimately, it is such a fantastical journey. I just couldn't resist, you know? We are now entering our second year at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, where we once again follow the adventures of Harry Potter, as played by Daniel Radcliffe, and his two best friends, Ron Weasley, as played by Rupert Grint, and Hermione Granger, as played by Emma Watson, as they further develop and hone their magical skills, meet a whole host of interesting and flavourful characters, old and new, and indeed both savoury and sour, uh, and further explore this tantalising world of spells, potions and incantations. However, Harry has already received a warning about his return to Hogwarts this year from Dobby the House Elf, as voiced by Toby Jones, who does everything he can with mischievous results to stop Harry from returning to school in fear for his life. So Harry, Ron and Hermione are immediately embroiled in another mysterious and cunning plan to usurp the authority at Hogwarts before they even enter those now welcoming and familiar walls. Somebody is looking to open the Chamber of Secrets, a hidden room somewhere within the grounds of the school, and it is up to our trio to figure out who is behind the dark events that transpire to threaten the very heart of Hogwarts, and before, indeed, the school is closed for good. Now, we're only one year in and already it feels like we're coming home. The warmth and familiar territory of Hogwarts is certainly inviting once again. And as soon as those first few notes play through the opening titles, you know there is just, you know, there is one just epic adventure that lies ahead. And indeed, nothing could be truer than that word, than the way that this film is presented. It completely builds on the world presented in the first movie and extends this outward to develop many of the supporting characters and ideologies of the wizarding world, examining in some depth, uh, you know, the prejudice and the rivalries that would serve to set up many of the stories uh, and, you know, the series storylines to come. There are some classically iconic Potter moments to be had, from the Weasley's flying car to the Weasley's themselves. And of course, Dobby and the Mandrakes. Sounds like an 80s punk band, of course. The Whomping Willow, and indeed, who could forget the terrifying arachnid Aragog or Moaning Metal, you know? And indeed, this is the one where Draco Malfoy, as played by Tom Felton, comes into his own. A mini-villain in the making, and indeed, the epitome of all things slithering. He certainly makes an interesting theatrical counterbalance to the overall story. Quite the performance, uh, you know, quite, well, sorry, quite the pantomime villain, I might say, but used to excellent effect. It has some wonderfully comic... It has some wonderfully comedic moments, especially early on as we meet the Weasleys and are introduced to the homely world and begin to certainly recapture, you know, the essence of the magic of the original movie whilst, you know, then progressing, turning the dial a little bit, ju just that little bit darker with a plot that has a much more sinister feel. And indeed, with the stakes now that have been raised, I must admit, there are a couple of truly terrifying moments, um, not least for the arachnophobes out there. I've always enjoyed its darker tone, and I would say overall it has a much more structured and determined mission than the original. It is still an absolutely excellent, you know, magical movie, don't get me wrong. 
it is simply enchanting, just the same. But I, indeed, I do prefer this one over the first for these reasons, though. It has much more structure, a better integrated end game, you know, and much more of a substantial magical quota. No complaints from me there. We have more involvement from many of the other members of the cast, and indeed some excellent additions, you know. It's still full of wonder and proves we still have a lot to learn about this world. It works within a very familiar territory, but doesn't feel, or doesn't dwell, shall we say, on the events of the first movie overall. Although, I would say a good general knowledge of these events and characters wouldn't go amiss when watching the film. <clears throat> it is a longer movie, um, and without some of the more exploratory aspects that were kind of present in the first movie, it does seem to be a little bit stretched, I must admit, and on the surface does get, kind of seem like, even given these extra minutes, it doesn't quite really cram as much in as its predecessor. I must admit, um, but not a minute is wasted, you know? Everything is kind of presented, uh, so, well, everything that is presented and witnessed is part of the overall integration and effortlessly, you know, plays towards building this ever-growing mystery that unfolds this time around. The main cast, they feel a lot more comfortable in their roles. You know, you can really start to see that they're kind of starting to fully develop these characters a lot more. Okay, so Radcliffe might look like a deer in headlights uh, at the times, um, but for the most part, the characters have a lot more confidence, and you can truly feel kind of the bonds of friendship between Harry, Ron, and Hermione grow even further in this instalment. It still has a very Columbus feel. Um, Kind of caught between the darker era of the Potter franchise that's to come, and indeed the bright and immersive beginning. Our trio are still quite young, uh, to say the least, and I think that he turned up the amount of peril just enough, you know? Striking a very good balance, I think, between the more wondrous, the brighter, more playful elements, and those with a more darker, more sinister intent. Such that, again, it struck the right chord for the level of the lead cast at this time. Effects-wise, I do find the use of more physical effects, especially for the creatures showcased in this movie, simply amazing. It is nice to see some actual interactions occur with some of these fantastical beasts that did seem to be kind of missing with the more CGI representations in the first movie. The level of detail still remained high throughout, um, and the world which has been created once more is, again, simply exquisite and really does pop as a result of the love and the attention to detail that has been utilised to craft every inch of this landscape and the characters within it. And the cherry on top of the polyjuice? The sincerely enchanting treat that is John Williams' score, which boldly adds to the themes he created for the first movie and brings them back around for another visionary take on the franchise in yet more absolutely iconic and bewitching notes seamlessly integrated to bring this world alive. Overall, this is another wonderfully presented fantasy adventure that while starting to darken this universe created in the first movie, it still retains many of its fantastical qualities, building and adding further into this wizarding world. Another beautifully orchestrated movie that doesn't fail to entertain, and whilst being a little bit drawn out, perhaps, uh, and still doesn't kind of, it, it doesn't waste any minute of its extended runtime, and doesn't miss a beat in bringing us another deep, intriguing mystery to solve. This time with higher stakes and much more of a personal touch. Consistently directed and showcasing how much the characters are now really, really, really are starting to come into their own. This has a much more succinct and focused story, the whilst Sacrificing some of the more explorative nature of the first movie, indeed, it is still more than wondrous and enchanting in its own right. So, that brings me to the end of this episode. Many thanks for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like. Please do hit that subscribe button for more movie reviews, trailer reactions and other movie-related content. Absolutely loved having you here at Starfest Movie Talk. Definitely love to have you back. Most of all, just thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.